Uh, you, get, you do the three, two, one, and then I'll jump in. Well, blessed, happy, joyful New Year to each one of you. I have five words that I'm going to share with you today that I believe if we take these five words to heart, it will really help us to have a good year. One of our, our brothers, uh, Sam Cruz, one of his sayings for the year was, well done, will say the son in 2021. How would you like it at the end of this year that Jesus, the son of God, would be able to say about your year, well done in 2021? I think all of us would take that, wouldn't we? Especially at the end of our life. You know, we, we're responsible for our lives. This is well done good and faithful service. And uh, but how do we do that? You know, sometimes we think that happy, blessed new year, everything has to be perfect to be a good year. Well, obviously last year, 2020, was not a perfect year circumstance wise. But I tell you what, I have witnessed that a lot of people are further along in their walk with God at the end of 2020 than at the beginning of 2020. Last week we spoke about making lemonade. A lot of you have been making lemonade this past year. But I believe good things are in store for this year. So the big question, how does it happen that we can have a good year, a blessed year, even when circumstances may fall uh, one way or another? Is it a matter of, it's like in bingo, you, you hope that the, the at the right at the right uh, you know number comes out, you know whatever it may be, and you say, oh, let's see what this one says. Ah, well, B10, okay. Ah, sorry, no. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is, uh, it's not a a uh, a random thing if we're going to have a good, blessed, solid year. It's not a random thing that we will, I got it, okay? It's not a random thing that uh, it's going to be a well done. You know, we have something to do uh, in regards to that. It's more than just this. It's something uh, that we participate with. And so I think it's a good thing. It's a life-giving thing to say to somebody, have a good year, have a good day, uh, have a great year. I think that is good. I have no problem with that. But I think an upgrade to that would be Make a good year. Make a good day. Uh, we have something to, to say about it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. All right. Uh, John Wooden, you've heard me quote him before. There's a choice that you have to make in everything you do. So keep in mind that in the end, the choice you make makes you. All right. So we have choices uh, as if we're going to have a good, solid, uh, blessed year. Now, I want to quote a number of verses today from, from uh, the Apostle John. And it's interesting, when, when John was called, he was not fishing, but he was mending his nets. Uh, the word in Greek is katarizo, which means to mend, to restore, to supply what is lacking. How many of you would say there might be some things in your life that might be lacking, that you need supply, that you need restoration? We all do, don't we? And so it seems like John's ministry was one of mending. You know, he wrote uh, a good, I don't know, 20% of the New Testament. He wrote the Gospel of John. He wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And he also wrote the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. And if you see the heart of God, the heart of the Holy Spirit uh, in John, it's a wanting to mend, a restoring of God's people. And it's interesting, I find uh, very interesting that the book of John begins with, uh, with a, a command and it ends with a command. And also in the middle of the book of John are these two words. And actually somebody nailed it on the, on the head earlier when we were talking about what the word of the year is going to be. I said five words can make a difference for you. And here it is. In 2021, follow the sun. In 2021, follow the sun. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to me. Come on. In 2021, follow the sun. Follow the sun. We have a visitor from uh, up Washington, D.C. area, and she said, get it done in 21. We like that one, too. All right. But if you and I, I want to promise you, listen, on the authority of God's word. 
You follow the sun in 2021 and you will have a solid year. Jesus said in John 8, chapter 12, he said this, he says, I am, in Greek it's a go in me, which means I myself and nobody else. He says, I am the light of the world. You follow me and you'll not walk in darkness. You will have the light of, of life. And we're all followers. We can follow our own minds. We can follow other people. We can follow movements. We can follow a lot of different things. But the scripture is telling us, follow the light. Follow Jesus. You know, and uh, also, well, let me pass out some notes now. Caesar, if you can help me over here. Thank you, sir. Okay. In 2021, follow the sun. Let's say it together. In 2021, follow the sun. Follow the sun. So the book of John begins, Jesus is looking for somebody. And you know what? Jesus is looking for you. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. And when he finds this particular person, Philip in this case, he says to him, follow me. If we want to know what the essence of what being a Christian is, it's to follow Jesus. It's a sad thing that some people uh, either call themselves Christians or they think they're Christians. But if you look at their lifestyle and you look at the teachings and the example of Jesus, there's a big disparity there. And so we want there to be a harmony in our lives as followers of Jesus. John 12, 26. Remember, John is wanting to help people get restored and mended. And having been a Christian now for 49 years, I would say if I were on my deathbed and people around me who, who, who I loved and everything, my last words would be, whatever you do, follow Jesus. You know, John the Baptist uh, lost some followers. In John chapter 1, uh, he had a, a big following of disciples, and he kept pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus. And some of his disciples st stopped following John the Baptist baptist and following jesus and i would say that john the baptist was successful in his ministry and i am as a pastor i'm successful in ministry to whatever degree i encourage teach help others to follow jesus you know now i know there's a place for people uh, following the example of other spiritual leaders i understand that but ultimately the only 24 7 shepherd that is available 24 7 is jesus you know, Carmen and I and others available now and then as we can be, but the 24-7 shepherd who says, follow me, he is available. In the middle of the night when you're hurting, you feel like screaming or crying, he is there. For example, another one of John's verses in chapter 12, verse 26, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. All right? And he doesn't say follow a religious system follow rules and regulations no he's saying follow the person of jesus christ going on uh in john chapter 21 i love this uh portion here paul or not paul but peter and jesus are having a conversation and jesus is narrowing in on peter isn't it wonderful to know that as as, as bad as peter blew it denying Christ three times and even cursed when he was doing it. Jesus didn't give up on him. I want you to know Jesus doesn't give up on people. That's good, good news. You know, sometimes we give up on ourselves, we give up on others. That's not the heart of Jesus. Jesus doesn't give up. So Jesus uh, is with Peter and he's asking Peter some questions. Do you really love me? You know, we don't have time to get into that portion there. But uh, Peter, or Jesus says to Peter, you follow me. Remember, the book of John began with a follow me. All through the book of John, there is follow me. And here at the end of John, Peter is hearing Jesus say, follow me. Well, Peter next does what we sometimes do. And Peter goes, uh, yeah, what about her? Uh, what about him? You know, sometimes we like to deflect we like to change the subject. You know, some people are experts. You start talking to them uh, about something that you want to get in depth with them, and they, they change channels, you know. They're very subtle in doing that. But anyway, Peter says, yeah, but what about him? And Jesus, all well, we all know, he says, what about him? You follow me. And I want to say once again, dear one, 2021, follow the Son. 
Now, in your notes here, you'll see the definition of follow. It says to come or go after a person or thing who is proceeding ahead, uh, to move or travel behind. And I have here, in other words, one leads and the other is the follower. You know, sometimes we want uh, to take the lead in our life and we say, uh, Jesus, you, uh, you come along and you bless me and you tag along, you follow me. That's not how it works. If we're going to really follow Jesus and follow the Son, we need to acknowledge him as master, as the leader. Sometimes, you know, and I think we can all identify with this well-known illustration, we're driving in the car of our life. And how many of you would say that you have wrecked a number of times? You know, you know, you know in different ways, you know, you wreck, you, you wreck. And so being a Christian is saying, Lord, uh, I've tried being behind the steering wheel of my life. It doesn't work super well. Lord, I'd like to get in the passenger seat or even in the back seat. Lord, I want you to be the steering wheel of, behind the steering wheel of my life. And we follow him. You know, sometimes it's uh, very pleasant to follow him. Sometimes it's hard to follow him. But in the good and the bad, uh, life, light. We live in a very dark world, don't we? There's a lot of evil going on. This is why Jesus says, you follow me and there will be light in your life. Even if you're going through a tunnel in your life, if you got Jesus with you, he is the one who can light up that tunnel as you work through the tunnel and get to the end of the tunnel there. Well... How to follow. You know, this, we're, I think we're on a series now. I could, actually, I probably have six messages I could give uh, today. But how to follow. And as we say here, observe his teaching and his example. You say, well, how do I follow Jesus? You know, first of all, it helps to come to Jesus. The uh, Bible says in John chapter 1, as many as received him, to those he gives the right to become the sons of God. You know, it's possible to go to church and not be a Christian. I mean, I was a churchgoer for 21 years, but at age 21, I said, Lord, I need help. This boy needs help. I need direction in my life. Uh, please come into my heart. Born me again. And uh, that was 49 years ago. You know, so later this year, I'll turn 50. Woo! <laughs> All right, but how do we follow Jesus? We follow him by like learning his teaching and looking at his example. Uh, for example, the example I give her, a very well-known example, and you mentioned earlier the, uh, the Lord's Prayer, and the, or no, that was Psalm 23, the Lord's Prayer, he says, forgive us as we forgive others. So you see, he's, teach, he's giving us a teaching here, and he comments on that, on that uh, teaching in John chapter, or Matthew chapter 6, and he says this, if you don't forgive others, you yourself will not be forgiven. And then also in Matthew 5, at the end of the chapter, he says, for your enemies, pray for them. Do good. So he's giving us teaching here. So if we're going to be followers of Jesus, then we go, uh, that's hard. But if we're going to follow him, now he will help us. Lord, I can't do this. I need help to do it. You know, he will help us. But look at his example on the cross. His enemies are, are, have, have caused him to be beaten to a bloody pulp. Nails in his hand, nails in his feet. He's dying. And what does he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. What an example. So you see, being a follower of Jesus, and this is why I read a gospel chapter a day. I go through the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four times a year simply by reading a chapter a day. And it reminds me of the teaching of Jesus. It reminds me of his spirit. Uh, you know, one time two of the disciples said, uh, Lord, they didn't welcome us here. Do you want us to call down fire like Elijah did? You know, Jesus said, guys, you don't know what spirit you're speaking with right now. You know, we need to uh, over and over again remind ourselves the spirit, uh, the, the heartbeat of Jesus, you know. And so, I, you know, if you, want to, if you want to have a New Year's blessing, read a chapter of the Gospels every day. Breathe it in, whatever you, whatever you breathe in, talk to God about it. Some of the best advice you will ever get. I've been doing it for years and years and years now, and it's a good part of who I am and where I'm at in God. Now, going back to John's words, 
skipping over to one of his epistles, 1 John chapter 2. Very interesting. He says, if anybody says that he's a Christian, he ought to walk the way that Jesus walked. Mm. Mm. Wow. You see, in other words, if somebody says they're a Christian, they are to follow the teaching and to follow the example of Jesus. Listen, folks, if we're going to get to the end of the year and receive a well done from the Son, it's as we follow the Son. Well, I find it fascinating. Uh, uh, John and I were, uh, John was traveling. Uh, we were going to get together to talk about the theme of today, uh, of the year, and uh, we weren't able to do that for a number of good, valid reasons. But I find it fascinating that he, one of the shepherds here at the church, when we were asking earlier, what do you think the theme for this year is? And what did he say? Follow the sun in 2021. To me, that is a bona fide um, affirmation, confirmation that this is a word of God for you. If you want to get a well done at the end of this year, follow the sun in 2021. Now in Colossians, uh, you know, we have a choice. Uh, in John chapter, it's not in your notes, but in John chapter 6 at the end, some of the disciples of Jesus are starting to walk away. Why? Because he says some difficult things. And so Jesus says to his disciples around him, are you going to walk away too? And Peter says, not me, not us. Where else can we go? You, Lord, have the words of life. Right there at that moment, Jesus, or, here's Jesus and Peter is right there with Jesus clinging to him, hanging on. Where you go, uh, I will go. Uh, what you feed me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go, Lord. He is there. Later on in his life, sadly, um, at a moment of testing, the scripture says that Peter followed Jesus from a distance. And listen, the challenge for us this year is not to follow Jesus from a distance, but to follow Jesus closely. In Colossians chapter chapter 2, it talks about holding fast to the head, the head of the body, which is Jesus. I remember many years ago, um, I was surfing in a place, I think it was called Machuca's Gardens. Um, and uh, I was surfing with uh, Willie Cook, one of my spiritual sons. And also, we bless him. He helps support this ministry here. And uh, after, I don't know, two or three hours of big waves, good waves, I was surfed out. My arms just didn't have any more. And so Willie uh, kept in the water. So I went in just to explore around. And to the right, or to the, uh, to the uh, it'd be the east of the waves, uh, there were some rock formations up there. And you sort of had the, it was jagged rocks, but I was able to climb up there and the waves were hitting this rock. It was really impressive. You know, so I went up there and there was a place that was sort of flat. And so I'm, uh, I'm up there and you know, the waves are hitting the rock and I see a wave coming. And so uh, I hold on to the rock before me, you know, the wave comes, I, I, I hold on, say, whoa, that was something. Well, some of you who know surfing in waves many times, waves come in seven sets. And that was the third or fourth wave. And so uh, I says, okay. And so the next wave come, and this thing was a monster thing. And I was holding on and the wave was so strong. It just, <laughs> really, I fell over. You know, and uh, my back got all scratched and bloody. You know, it's sort of funny because Carmen told Willie, take care of Corey, you know. And so when we got back, I said, it wasn't my fault, it was Willie's fault, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, there was another way coming, you know, and it, it was ragged and I couldn't run away. So I got on, on the, I hold on to that rock and I said, I am holding on. And I, and I had been thinking of uh, Colossians 2, 12 or 15, wherever it is, I said, Jesus, I am holding on to you. So I held on that rock with all of my strength. And the wave come and wanted to, to wipe me out and throw me back again. But this time, because I was holding on to that rock, dear one, I was able to withstand the wave. And it was exhilarating. You know, and I don't know what type of waves are going to come your way this year. I don't know what type of storms or waves, but I can promise you this. And I exhort you with this. 
Hold on to Jesus with all of your might. Hold on. We need one another. We need to gather with one another. All that is important. All right? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to Jesus. You know, as you follow him, as you hold on to him, uh, you'll get a well done uh, at the end of this year. You know, Deuteronomy, that's actually Colossians 2.19. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 20, it says, listen, choose to love the Lord your God and obey him and cling, cling to him. You know, hold fast to him. Don't let him go. And that's the number one exhortation. Uh, as you follow Jesus, follow closely. And you hold on to Jesus no matter what comes. Uh, and like we heard earlier, a great exhortation from Sister Tammy. Uh, if you're in the boat with Jesus, Jesus says, I'm taking you to the other side. I don't know what this year looks like, but Jesus will take you to the destination that he has for you through this year and throughout this year at the end of the year. And how do we do it? We put our faith, our trust, our confidence in Jesus. And uh, I want to read something. You can read it with me if you want. Um, about true Christianity. This is bottom line type stuff. Because sometimes pe people think of Christianity as well, going to church, going to a service. That's not Christianity. It is truest, and this is from a British pastor, it is truest, purest reality. Christianity is simply a personal relationship with a living God. That's it. It's not a religion or a bunch of ceremonies or legalistic expectations. It's about a person. That's right. It's about knowing Jesus. And here's some good advice. Let Jesus ever remain the central figure of your Christianity. And you will never go far wrong. There it is, folks. Let Jesus, Jesus, Jesus ever be the center of your life. Follow him and cling to him. And uh, you know, in the book of Revelation, it's interesting. You know, it talks about there are some who follow the beast, who follow the devil, who follow the demonic. But also in the book of Revelation, it says these are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. And this, that's a company we want to be in, don't we? We want to be amongst those who follow the lamb of God, who follow the lion of the tribe of Jesus wherever he goes. And let's remember, we become what we aim for. <clears throat> Our decisions have a far-reaching effect with eternal consequences. Listen, I want to just challenge you. Make this your aim this year to be a faithful, fervent, wholehearted follower of Jesus. Now, there may be some here today that you've never really had a personal relationship with Jesus. We're going to have some prayer later. Just invite you that you'll be able to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. But sometimes, you know, as we're walking along in our Christian life, sometimes we get a little weak, weak need and we need somebody to come along and pray for us. And we're going to give you that opportunity in just a moment. But uh, I want to say this in ending here, as, as we're saying, um, follow the Son in 2021. I don't want to say to you, just have a great year. I want to say, make it a great year. That's right. Yeah. Make it a great yes. year. Yes. Make it a great year by making a commitment, a decision, saying every day of this year, Jesus, I want to follow you. Will you stumble along the way? Yes, you will. Will you have imperfect days? Yes, you will. But I got great news for you in Proverbs 24, 16. It says a good man may fall down seven times a day. Yeah! He gets up yeah. again. You know, we thank God that he is a God who gets us back up and gets us in the race and get us, gets us in the fight. Hallelujah. And, as a, and uh, you know, like somebody said uh, earlier, all aboard. You know, Jesus is inviting us to get into his boat and uh, he's going to take us to the other side. All aboard. And yeah. so uh, get it done in 21 by following the sun in 2021. Praise the Lord. Uh, just put your hand on your heart wherever you are. You might be in Africa. You might be in Virginia, wherever you are. Father, I just pray for everyone who's heard this message today. The ones listening, and Lord, uh, here, the ones listening uh, via YouTube and all of that. Father, it's by the grace of God we are who we are. And I pray abundant flow of grace, Lord, over each one who's watching this or hearing of God. I speak the grace of God, the grace of God to you that you will be empowered and enriched by the Holy Spirit to be able to follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Yea, God. Amen. Woo!